I'm Racer Magazine's Marshall Pruitt. Let's take a look inside IMSA's fascinating new hybrid GTP cars. The next episode in our GTP 101 tech video series features the tail end of the drivetrain, where horsepower is captured and transmitted. When it comes to handling the hybrid power generated by Acura, BMW, Cadillac, and Porsche, GTP manufacturers use a brand new transmission made by x one of the most respected names in the industry. Codenamed the P1359, the spec seven-speed gearbox is a transverse design, meaning the gear ratios and major drive components are positioned sideways, parallel to the axles, instead of pointing directly out the back of the car. Opting for a transverse layout instead of a longitudinal design done to bring the considerable weight of a transmission forward in the chassis, which makes for better handling by concentrating that weight towards the center of the car. According to X-Track, the P1359, which is made from aluminum, weighs 172 pounds. By the rules, electronically controlled differentials and other computer-driven items aren't allowed. Traditional limited slip differential is the only option for teams to alter and tune. Despite the limitation on the LSD, there's plenty of electronic and hydraulic actuation going on within the transmission, but that's all happening forward of those seven gears and that differential. The fun and truly new component in the back end of the GTP car is the motor generator unit, the MGU, made by Bosch. And that MGU serves a few purposes in GTP. First, it's used to start the cars. That's right, GTP cars do not have traditional starters like you'd find on most road cars. When it's time to fire those Acuras, BMWs, Cadillacs, and Porsches, the car's big battery from WAE Technologies sends some of that charge to the MGU. The MGU is instructed to wind itself up. Through a drop gear and secondary shaft, the MGU spins itself and the engine's input shaft, and those turbocharged or naturally aspirated motors spark to life. When the MGU is in action on track, it's used in a very different way than what Formula One fans are accustomed to seeing with their hybrid open wheel cars. Where F1 cars use the battery and MGU system in highly situational moments on each lap, say to launch onto a long straight or to boost their top speed, IMSA's Bosch MGU is far from a situational device. In fact, it's constantly working on every lap and being used to charge the 700 volt battery under braking and while accelerating in a straight line, and to return that electronic horsepower, somewhere between 40 and 67 ponies, depending on the track, back to the rear wheels at any point on the circuit where the manufacturers feel it'd benefit their lap times. And because IMSA's MGUs are constantly working and must do so for up to 24 hours at a time, they're bigger and heavier than anything you'd come across in F1. Where they're small and light, approximately 15.5 pounds a piece in F1, GTP, and in deference to its rugged endurance racing formula, the Bosch MGU tips the scales at about 46 pounds, 46.3 to be precise, and spins up to a maximum 20,000 RPMs to generate electricity off the rear axles. MGUs and other forms of racing often spin to a higher RPM level, and as a result, it's easy to hear the loud whining sound when they're activated. With the somewhat lower RPM threshold in IMSA, the MGU tends to function without giving us that telltale audio whine when they're engaged. The MGUs all mount to the same aluminum cartridge that bolts to the x track P1359, and within that silver cartridge seen here, Bosch's machine galleys for the MGU's cooling fluid to circulate. As mentioned in our ESS charging strategies video, the MGU also serves as each GTP car's electrical lifeline. As long as it's functioning as intended and charging that WAE Technologies battery, everything's fine. Since the GTP cars do not have alternators, it's up to the MGU to continually function, keep charging the battery in order to keep the rest of the car running. If the MGU malfunctions and stops charging the battery, the clock starts counting down on how long the internal combustion engine will run before the battery is drained and that ice and the car as a whole is out of electricity to continue running. Depending on the battery's state of charge, manufacturers estimate a GTP car with a non-functioning MGU would have anywhere between 15 and 30 minutes left to make their way to the garages. Unlike the ESS, it takes somewhere between 45 minutes to an hour to change. 
The MGU isn't designed for a quick and easy swap. Most manufacturers suggest the time needed to disassemble the back of their cars, remove the MGU, replace it with a fresh unit, reassemble everything behind the engine, and reattach the aft bodywork might take as little as two hours, if not more. And since the transmission and rear suspension needs to come off the car, we'd likely see that car placed onto the chassis setup pad to ensure all the suspension settings and corner weights are correct before sending their drivers out to do 200 plus miles per hour. At roughly $50,000 a piece, the bowling ball sized Bosch MGUs pack an impressive electronic punch for their weight and volume. Compared to the ICE and the ESS, the MGUs are the most efficient producer of power on the GTP cars, and thanks to their contributions, IMSA has a hybrid solution that will carry its top series well into the future. Thanks for watching and visit racer.com for more videos and stories about IMSA's exciting new prototype formula.